Hello friends, welcome to risingpower.com. Today we are talking about series 3 where we are learning a great deal on trigonometry. This is our episode number 21 and friends today we are going to talk about solving questions problems related to trigonometric identities. In the last two episodes we have been looking at what are the trigonometric identities. So we looked at first trigonometric identity which was sine square a plus cos square a equal to 1 then we looked at 1 plus tan square a equal to sec square a and then finally the third and final identity that we looked at was 1 plus cot square a equal to cosec square a it is very important friends to understand that identity means for all values of a a is basically an angle in a right triangle that means the value of the a must be between 0 and 90 degrees, 0 degrees and 90 degrees. So A must be greater than 0 degrees because you cannot have one angle equal to 0 then there is no right triangle and then it can be equal to or less than equal to or less than 90 degrees. So identity means that these trigonometric ratios will always be true for all values of A in this range, right? Now, this is something we have already looked at in the last two episodes. So today, we are going to talk about how do we solve questions. So what kind of questions, how do we solve? Going into solving these questions, the strategy will be as such. First, try and express the trigonometric ratios in terms of sine and cos, if possible. That means, if it is possible we will try to get the trigonometric ratios expressed in the form of sine and cos because it is just much more easier if we see the ratios in terms of sine and cos and finally which is very obvious is we would whenever we get a chance we are going to apply the three trigonometric identities that we just saw so that said now friends let's take up our first question our first question is something like this. It's choose the right answer. It's a multiple choice. Sec A plus tan A times 1 minus sine A equal to which is the value? Is it A? Is it B? Is it C? Is it D? So we have sec A plus tan A. So what we are going to do, like we just discussed, we are going to express them as much as possible in terms of sine and cos. So sec will be 1 by cos. So 1 by cos plus tan A simply is sin A by cos A. This multiply by 1 minus sin A. So let's solve this and see uh, what we get. Right? So our original equation is this. So here um, in this first uh, bracket, so denominator is cos A cos A and the numerator is 1 plus sin A right because the denominator is the same so you have 1 plus sin A now this entire uh, you know thing is multiplied by this so we have to multiply this by 1 minus sin A now at this point friends you must be able to you must be able to see that what we have in the numerator is 1 plus sin A times 1 minus sin A. That is, this is of the form A plus B times A minus B. Now, this will come with practice, but the moment you see this 1 plus sin A times 1 minus sin A, you must realize that this is in this form A plus B times A minus B, which is equal to A square minus B square. So that means we can write this as 1 square minus sin squared a or yeah or sin a whole square and denominator we still have cos a now friends recall that the first identity which says sin square a plus cos square a equal to 1 or here we have 1 minus sin square a. So if you move the sin square a on the other side, 
So 1 minus sine square is nothing but cos square A. So here we will have cos square A divided by cos A. So one of the cos A's will cancel out and we will be left with cos A. So here, so which choice is cos A? It is choice number D. So this is our correct answer. So friends, this is one of the questions, one type of questions that you will get. You may get on questions involving identity. Let's take a look at second type of question. Here, this is a little bit more complex. It looks a little bit more complex. So what we have is we have proof. We have to prove that sine theta, and please recall that, friends, theta is, I think it's a Greek uh, character that represents an angle. It's common, very common in math to use theta for a an angle, which is the way we use x as uh, for any unknown variable. So theta is used, commonly used for angle. So we have sine theta minus 2 sine cube theta divided by 2 times cos cube theta minus cos theta. We have to prove that this entire thing is equal to tan theta. So how do we actually go about solving something like this? Well, we will start with the obvious. So here we can take sine theta common, right? So we will say for the numerator, we take 1 sine theta common. So now for sine theta, we have 1 minus 2 times. So 1 sine theta is taken out. So we have sine square theta. Sine square theta divided by, in the denominator, we have again cos cube theta and cos theta. We can take one of the cos theta common, then we are left with 2 cos square theta because cube means 3. So 1 is already out. So we have cos cube theta minus 1. Now from at this point, you should be able to recognize that sine theta by cos theta is equal to tan theta. That means this equals to tan theta. So if I have to, if we have to prove that this entire thing is equal to tan theta, it means this whole thing, 1 minus 2 times sine square theta divided by 2 cos square theta minus 1, this entire thing must be equal to 1. So also, you should be able to recognize that the identity at this point that will be probably most beneficial will be which of the three? It will be the first one. That is, sine squared A plus cos squared A is equal to 1 because we have sine squared theta and cos squared theta. So for the time being, what we are going to do, we are going to do something like this. So this becomes tan theta. Now, here we have 1 minus this. So instead of 1, let us re replace 1 with this. So we are going to say sine squared theta plus cos squared theta. So instead of 1, we are writing it sine squared theta plus cos squared theta. And then we have minus 2 times sine squared theta. Minus 2 times sine squared theta. So this is all we have in the numerator. And for denominator, we have 2 cos square theta minus, again we are going to replace it with this, because we have minus in the front, when you open the bracket, it will be minus sine square theta minus cos square theta. Now if you solve this, so obviously we have our tan theta here. So in the interest of the space, let us just keep the tan theta on the side. Now sine square theta minus 2 sine square theta. So, uh, so for just, I'm, I'm focusing on just this part. So I'm taking the tan theta out. So I'm looking at this and this. So, so on, in the numerator, we will have so cos square theta. We will have cos square theta minus sine square theta minus 2 sine square theta will be minus sine square theta minus sine square theta and in the denominator we have 2 cos square theta minus cos square theta will be cos square theta minus sine square theta. So in other words friends, 
what we are seeing is that these two are indeed same. So, or what we have is that tan theta times this divided by this and these two are one and the same. So, that means this expression is indeed equal to tan theta which is the right hand side. So, friends, this is how I am just giving you some, it is it's not possible to cover every single question. I am just giving you some ideas as to how you want to think about these kind of questions and a lot of this will come with practice. The more and more you try out different kinds of questions, the more and more you will develop this intuition of your own. Now let's, let's sign off by looking at one final type of question. So here prove that for any acute angle A, cosec A minus cot A whole square is equal to 1 minus cos A divided by 1 plus cos A. So we have something which is a whole square here and here we have this. One thing to think about is whenever you have something like this, what one of the things that you can think about is this is actually of the form, this is A, A minus B divided by A plus B here. So depending on what we want, this can be the numerator or denominator can be very easily transferred into a square minus b square format. That is, if we were to multiply both sides here by, by let us say a minus b, a minus b, if you want to multiply both numerator denominator by a minus b, then the denominator becomes a square minus b square. If you wanted to make the numerator a square minus b square, we simply multiply both of them by this. So, whenever you see something like this, it must cross your mind that this can very easily be transferred into this format. Now, let us solve the left hand side a little bit and find out because we are not able to establish anything from here, right? So, let us solve this a little bit. So, so, so cosec A is 1 by sin A, right? So, 1 by sin A, actually what we can do, let us let's, let's actually open the square first, the whole square first. So, we will have cosec square A minus 2 times cosec A cot A. Let us just try to keep it separate plus cot square A or this will be equal to now we want to express this as in terms of sin and cos. So, cosec is nothing but 1 by sin. So, cosec square will be 1 by sin square A right minus 2 times cosec A is 1 by sin A times cot A is cos A by sin A, right? Plus cot square A is cos square A by sin square A. Or what we have here is 1 divided by sin square A minus 2 times cos A divided by sin square A plus cos square A divided by sin square A. So, one thing right away you can see friends is that the denominator is sin square A. It means if you look at this one on the right hand side, clearly if we can multiply this by A minus cos A on both sides, we can then bring this, the right hand side, to A square minus B square. That is if I multiply the numerator denominator of the right hand side by 1 minus cos A. So, the denominator becomes 1 square minus cos square A or 1 minus cos square A which will be sin square A. 
So my left hand side, I have already got sine square A. Right? So let us keep going. Let's see what we get from here. Let's clean this up a little bit. So what we have here, okay, so let's find out. So we have we have 1 minus 2 cos A plus cos square A. This is what we have on the numerator. So let's write it here. So we have, let's write it, 1 minus 2 cos A plus cos square A. This is what we have in the numerator. And our denominator is sine square A. Right? So now at this point, what we can do, friends, is that, so if you look at uh, 1 minus 2 cos A plus cos square A, we can write this in this form, right? We can write this as 1 square minus 2 times 1 times cos A plus cos A whole square divided by sine square A. Or we can say this is of the form A square minus 2AB plus B square which we know means A plus B whole square. Right? So this will be 1 plus cos A whole square divided by now we know that let's write it here sine square a is 1 minus cos square a from our identity so denominator we can replace sine square a by 1 minus cos square a now we also know that a square minus b square is equal to a plus b times a minus b so what we have here is we can write the numerator as 1 plus cos A times 1 plus cos A, right, because it is whole square. So there are two of them divided by, this is A square minus B square. So this will be 1 plus cos A times 1 minus cos A. So 1 plus cos A and 1 plus cos A will cancel out and we will be left with 1 plus cos A divided by 1 minus cos A. So friends, I know that this was a little bit more complicated, challenging, but it was important for me to walk you through the thought process that you would want to think along these lines as you solve these kind of questions. So with this, friends, we have come to the conclusion of our series 3 on trigonometry. In the next video, we are going to do a quick recap of what all we have learned.